Everybody doing good this morning? Y'all want me to hit some journey on this keyboard? <clears throat> if I knew how, I promise you I would. <clears throat> oh, it's good stuff. Thank you, ladies. And it's good to see your own children serving the Lord in that way. Uh, we've got a couple house cleaning issues or announcements to, to take care of before we get started. That way we can get these out of the way. <clears throat> just want to let you know that if you did not know, uh, Brother Bill Stortz uh, passed away late last night. And, and we know that he is singing in glory this morning. Uh, if you don't know him, he pastored in this area for many, many years. Um, Right now, they're looking at doing a visitation tomorrow night at First Baptist in Havana. I, I'm thinking, um, don't know all the details yet, so you can check. You know, if, you, if you're an internet type person, you can check Cornwell's funeral home's website, and they'll have all that stuff probably later this afternoon or tonight. After we get done this morning, uh, we're going to go into business meeting to vote for Joshua Crow uh, to become our associate pastor to worship. Uh, he's gonna, and we're calling him associate pastor because he's going to have a lot of duties to do. So, uh, but his emphasis is going to be on leading us in worship on Sunday mornings. So we'll we'll go into business meeting after the service this morning. And we'll have a new Sunday school class starting up soon for young adults. So be looking for that if you're in that age group. And I need something from a couple of people. If you can obtain these items, a lamb or a sheep. I would really like to have a real one, but I don't want him messing the carpet up. So if you got a fake lamb or a sheep that we could borrow for the next few weeks, like that would be super awesome. Or if you can come up with one, that would be pretty cool. I'd love to be able to, to borrow that. As you can see, we've got a prop on the stage now. We're going to have props adding every week as we go through this series. And I know that some of you rednecks have a one-way only sign that you stole from the highway department in your <coughs> garage. Uh, so if we could borrow that, that would be awesome. I won't tell your name. We'll just say it showed up here. Uh, and if it helps you at all, I work for the state, so I'll make sure that you don't get in trouble. <laughs> so we need a lamb or a sheep, preferably a fake one, if you got one laying around somewhere. And then a, a one-way sign. That would be pretty awesome if you could hook the preacher up with that. Blessings on you. So <clears throat> if you have your Bibles and you're ready to go to work this morning, find the Gospel of John chapter 6. <laughs> This morning we're going to start a series on the I Am Statements of Jesus. I've never done a series like that, so it's a new adventure for me. And so this morning we're looking at I Am the Bread of Life, and I guess that kind of tells why we got some bread up here. John chapter 6 is where we're going to go to this morning, and that'll be where we stay. <clears throat> What is your favorite restaurant for the bread? <clears throat> not, 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 not for the whole meal, for the bread. What's your, your favorite restaurant for the bread now? Famous Dave's and Branson. Famous Dave, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give you some of mine for the bread. Red Lobster. <laughs> Those cheddar biscuits are amazing. <clears throat> That's some good stuff right there, well, I'm telling you. <laughs> Now, I like me some Popeyes. <laughs> See, when I go to Popeyes, I don't just get an extra biscuit. I get a six-pack of biscuits. <laughs> but y'all think six-pack, y'all think of something else. I think, y'all, yeah, I get a six-pack of biscuits. Man, whoo! And Olive Garden has some amazing breadsticks. And we know Cracker Barrel is famous for the cornbread. That's some good stuff, ain't it? Uh, Y'all like, can we dismiss and go to lunch? <laughs> now, if you haven't experienced one of those places and had the cheddar biscuits and the Popeye's biscuits and stuff like that, um, you're probably not saved. <laughs> <laughs> if you really want to know who Jesus is in your life, you need to go to Popeye's when you leave church this morning and get you a six-pack of those biscuits. <clears throat> Now, in most restaurants, the bread is free. 
Um, they bring you the bread, and it's generally an all-you-can-eat type deal, and the bread is just extra. Bread is just a side dish. But in Jesus' day, bread was the main course. Like, bread was it. That's what you got. You, you didn't get an appetizer of bread. You got the bread. So if you got your Bibles open to John chapter 6, we're going to look at one verse to get us started, verse 35. <coughs> And we'll walk back through a little bit of this, kind of show you what's going on and why Jesus said what he said. But John 6, 35, there's so I got it. <laughs> then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. Now it excites me to see people who are hungry from God. Because fresh manna represented a newness of God every day. And, and some of you, you're getting that manna every day. I know you are. <clears throat> man, you're seeking God and you're going after God on a daily basis. And, and man, that excites me to just see that. And, and for you to come up later or, or, or throughout the week or some people will text me or email me and like, man, this is what I read or this is what I listened to. And man, I love that stuff. Keep that stuff coming. Because that encourages me as a pastor that you're growing in your faith and you're feeding on that bread. And some of you are here today because you need fresh bread. And, and you've been like eating stale bread for a long time, so you've come today just to get that fresh bread. Now, you may not believe this, but I brag on you all the time. <laughs> like, I really do. Because a lot of people will say, hey man, tell me about your church. And I don't just tell them that you're good people. I don't just say, man, it's a good church, because we are a good church. Everybody knows that. But this is what I tell people about you. Man, these people are hungry. They're hungry. They're hungry for God. They want God. They want to experience more of God. And man, that's good stuff. Because you know how many pastors I hear talk bad about their church? <laughs> like for real. So, man, it's a blessing for you that your pastor can brag on you out in the community. And I'm, not, I'm not trying to do that just so people are like, hey, man, I'm going to that church, you know. Like, that's for real. Like, I brag on you all the time, and I'm like, man, these people are hungry. I mean, you can ask anybody. These people are hungry. Man, they're seeking after God. They want God. So, be glad that you get bragged on. <clears throat> now, if you know anything about the Old Testament... You'll remember that when Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt and out of slavery, they got some distance along and they began to grumble and complain. Because they said they thought they were going to starve to death. So they just started complaining and complaining and complaining. And so finally, Moses prays and God says, okay, I'm going to hook them up. I'm going to give them some fresh manna every single day. And they're to go out every day and get just enough for that day. And God said, don't, don't try to stock up on it. Because if you stock up on it, it's going to ruin. I want you to get just enough for that day. And that's what happened. They would go out and get just enough for that day. But now you had some imbeciles, you know, we got them all everywhere. The day's like, man, I'm going to get some extra. So they would take it and they'd hide it in their tent. And the next day they'd wake up and be with worms and maggots and all that stuff in it. <clears throat> and now God did this on purpose because God wanted them to depend on Him on a daily basis. He wanted them to depend on, on God for their daily needs. Now here's a phrase I want you to remember for the rest of this morning. Yesterday's bread is no good. Have you ever gotten bread out of the pantry and you go to make a sandwich or some toast or whatever it is that you do and it had mold on it? Now my grandmother would pick the mold off and say, eat it anyway, boy. <laughs> don't, don't do that. Don't do that. That ain't no good. Like, don't do that to your kids and grandkids. It's gone for the rest of their life because mold start growing in their nose. And, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's not good. Don't do that. But that's what my grandmother would do. Like, just pick it off, boy, and keep going. <laughs> but I'm curious this morning. How many of us in here are living on yesterday's bread? You know. Living off past experiences, whether good or bad. Why do you think that when Jesus was teaching his disciples to pray, right in the middle of that prayer in Matthew 6, Jesus said this. When he's teaching to pray, he says, Give us today our daily bread. Today. God, don't, don't give me yesterday's bread because that was yesterday. Give us today 
our daily bread. God, I need fresh bread today. God, I need newness today. God, I, I need you to, to talk to me today. God, I need you to work in my life today in a new way, a fresh manner. I need some new stuff, God. God, I need you to do this today. Give me this day. Not yesterday. Give me this day. Now, I want you to know this morning that Jesus is not a side dish. He's the main course. Amen. Did you know that bread is mentioned over 300 times in the Bible? So when Jesus said, I'm the bread of life, he was saying, I'm not just a snack that you eat every once in a while with some peanut butter. I'm not the appetizer that you get at the restaurant. I'm not the dish that you eat before the meal. So when Jesus said, I am the bread of life, he's saying, I am the meal. I'm all that you need. I'm the main course. I'm the only one that can fill you up. Now let me tell you about these people that Jesus was talking to. They were looking for a side dish. And they remind you that this is the same group of people that ate the Moby Dick sandwich at the beginning of chapter 6. <laughs> so when they realized that Jesus had left, when they realized that their means of food supply had went to the other side of the lake, what did they do? They crank up their nine nines and they race across the lake because they were looking for Jesus and they were looking for another miraculous snack. And wouldn't you know it, there stands Jesus, the one who just yesterday fed them. Now remember, yesterday's bread is no good. Amen? Amen. <laughs> Now here's something interesting. How come we don't know what happened to the 12 basketfuls of leftovers from the fish fry? Why don't we know that? They picked up 12 basketfuls of leftovers of bread. What happened to it? Just vanished into space? We don't know. Bible don't say. I googled it too. <laughs> I read, I wanted to know what happened to those 12 basketfuls. No, theolo no theologian would touch it because nobody knows. So this is what I come up with. Yesterday's bread is no good. We don't know what happened to it. What happened to it? We don't know. But I do know this. When Jesus taught his disciples to pray, he said, give us today our daily bread. Today. We want today. So when they cross the lake, they see Jesus standing there and, and they say, when did you get here? And Jesus is so cool because he doesn't answer their question. He changes the subject and calls them out on their motives. Now back up a little bit in chapter 6 to verse 25 and 26. <clears throat> Are you there? It said, when they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, you are looking for me not because you saw miraculous signs, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. So a crowd gathers out of greed to satisfy their curiosity and also satisfy their bellies. And even after miraculous fish fry, they did not understand who it was that had just fed them. And they did not understand what it was and the grace that was given to them when they earned a meal that they did not even deserve. <laughs> because Jesus gave them something that they could not de deserve and they did not need. And he just he gave it to them because it was grace. Listen, these people were not seeking a savior. They were seeking a magical chef. They were trying to place an order without God on the menu. You see, the crowd was focused on the physical. But what they didn't understand was that the physical and the spiritual was now intertwined with each other. Because the spiritual has now become physical because what happened? The Word became what? Flesh. So the spiritual is now the physical. And it's not necessarily their fault that they were looking for the physical. It's just that their perception of this whole thing was messed up. Have you ever went through the... I'm going to sit down for a minute. Okay, that cool? Can I sit down? <laughs> Have you ever went through the drive through with a car full of kids? <laughs> Lord Jesus, help us all. <clears throat> we got five kids, and you know one is gone to college now, so we still got four at home that we have to feed. 
Um, I'll be glad when they can do that themselves and get jobs. <coughs> uh, but yeah. <coughs> but ordering in a drive through with a car full of kids is a nightmare. There's a lot of hollering involved. <coughs> um, some curse words. <coughs> arguing. Who knows what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about. So what we do is we've, we've got this system now. And i got to give my wife credit because I'm not smart enough. So when we get to McDonald's or Wendy's or whatever it is, we pull over to the side. We get a piece of paper and a pen. And then we start hollering, what do you want? <laughs> and then while you're talking to one, the other one tries to give his order. Y'all ever deal with that? And like, shut up, ain't nobody talking to you. Is it just me? It's just me, ain't it? I promise I'm not that bad of a guy. But you trying to take an order, and this one over here says he wants mayonnaise, and this one over here says, I don't want mayonnaise. I'm not talking to you. And you, you we're writing it down, and by the time it gets time to order mine or her food, I'm like, I don't even want nothing. <laughs> so, so we got our order, and we got it all on the paper. So we ease up to the window or, or to, the, to the mechanical box, you know, and we tell everybody, shut up. Don't say a word, I'm going to snap your head off. <laughs> Amen? Amen. <laughs> All right, so we got an order. We're ready. It's perfect. Okay, everybody's being quiet. They know I'm serious. The little mechanical box begins to talk. We got the order. We give the order. Is that correct? That's correct. And then the person that runs the mechanical box has the nerve to say, would you like an ice cream cone with that? <laughs> and then it's chaos again. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but I wonder this morning, <clears throat> in our lives, and in our church services, and, and what we do on a daily basis, you know, we give all these orders to God or, or, or to Jesus. and It's like these people, you know, they come to Jesus with their order. And we sit through church and we sit through the singing and, and we worship and, and through the preaching. And, and we're giving this order to Jesus of this is what I need. I would like to have this. and I need you to do this in my life. And I wonder how many times... Jesus is just like sitting there and he's thinking, would you like to have some God with that? Would you like to have some God with that? How many of us this morning, we, we give Jesus our, our menu and God is he's not even on the menu? You know, we get so busy in life and, and then we're keeping up with our schedules and kids got ball games everywhere. And we're going here, we're going there. You know, we work a bunch of hours trying to provide for our families and, and we're trying to keep up with everything and trying to keep everybody happy and, and trying to find satisfaction and fulfillment in all these areas of our lives. And even to the point where we're serving in the church and Jesus is saying, would you like some God with that? Jesus is trying to tell us, dude, I'm the bread. <laughs> I'm the bread. When you get full on me, when you get full on me, everything changes. Everything in your life will change. When you quit looking for satisfaction <coughs> everywhere else, and I think that's why Jesus is trying to tell us this morning, yesterday's bread, it's no good. Jesus is trying to explain this to these people that come follow him across the lake. And, and what did they do? Same thing we do. They threw up an Old Testament story at Jesus. Isn't that what we do? Our religious ideologies, we throw them at Jesus. Well, this is the way it's supposed to be. This, this is how we've always done it. This is just what it is, Jesus. This, this is what we need to do. And these people, they begin to argue with Jesus about something he provided. And Jesus was like, yeah, I was there. I was there when you went and picked up the man out of the, the forest. I was there. And they argued with God about what God had done. Now, none of us have ever done that, have we? Look at verses 30 and 31. Or 31 and 32. And 33, my bad. 
I'm starting in 31, it says, this, this is what the people were saying. Our forefathers ate the manna in the desert, as it is written. See, there you go, throwing scripture at the one who wrote the scripture. And it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. You see, when you break bread with Jesus and you, and you feast on Jesus, you, you break tradition and you break everything that you thought you knew and needed. I try to give you good bread every week. I try. You may not like it sometimes, and what I preach may go against everything that your grandmama told you your entire life. But the bread that you get every Sunday is not yesterday's leftovers. I hold myself a lot to, to try to give you good stuff. I want you to have good bread every week. And when I say that I see that you're hungry, you're hungry. And that's good. Because when you get not hungry, there's something wrong. There's an area of your life that's messed up if you're not feasting on Jesus. Because if you continue going after yesterday's manna, you'll continue living in the this is the way it used to be world. And you're going to eat bread with maggots in it. And you'll get old stuff that's no good anymore. Bread that's ruined. Because see, that's exactly what these people were doing. They were like, well, Moses fed us. Look what Moses did. And Jesus was like, actually, Moses didn't do anything. Amen. I did it. Moses was just a leader. I did it. Moses was just there. You know, eating fresh bread daily, it changes you. Give us this day our daily bread. You know, I do things different. You know that? If you don't know that by now, man, you'd missed out. Like, I'm, I'm weird and I do things different. But the reason I do it different is because God told me not to give you yesterday's manna. I try to bring a new aspect to the scriptures. And my job is to give you fresh bread, even if you've got to choke it down sometimes. I give you the bread, but it's up to you what you do with it. And if you refuse to eat the bread, don't get mad when you don't understand what God is doing in your life. That's right. Amen. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. And when he told his disciples to pray for fresh bread daily, he said, give us this day our daily bread. And when you ask God for fresh bread every day, it changes you. God changes us when we feast on him every single day. If you're not changed from one week to the next, one day to the next, you're not feasting on good bread. You're eating yesterday's manna, and yesterday's manna is ruined. God is changing us. God changes me every day. God is changing me and revealing something new to me every single day in the Scriptures. I want to tell you something. You listen to one of my sermons 10 years ago, you'd be like, man, that ain't the same guy. <laughs> like, that is not him. Because God has changed me. He's changed everything about my thinking, about the way I wrap myself around the Scriptures, everything about that. God is changing me because I eat fresh bread every day. I refuse to eat stale bread. Now, I think it's interesting to note that the only item on the menu at the Last Supper was bread. The only edible item on the menu at the Last Supper was bread. Why? Because Jesus is the bread of life. You're not getting an appetizer, boys. You're getting a real deal. They didn't eat anything else. <clears throat> Jesus is not just the bread giver. He is the bread. That's a good spot for somebody to say amen. amen. Now, you can make a full meal out of bread. <clears throat> I do. All the time. And I'm thinking, why did I order that when I could have ate that free bread? <laughs> Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so you can make a full meal out of bread. That's why this passage, that's why this passage is, is so important and so key to our lives. Bread is a source of energy and protein. Bread provides carbohydrates. It helps with growth and development. It has vitamins and iron and calcium. And here's a big one that you might understand. It helps steady your nerves so you don't snap on your kids. <clears throat> That's why your mama always told you, be sure you eat your bread, boy. Right? Because it's that important. If something natural can do all of that for you, 
And if Jesus calls himself the bread of life, what more can he do? That's good stuff. I don't care who you are. <laughs> Look at verses 48 through 51. <clears throat> I am the bread of life. Your forefathers ate the man in the desert, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which a man may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I give you for the life of the world. You see, when you're poor and you have nothing, you got bread. When you're rich, and you got everything, you got bread. No country has the patent on bread. No nationality can claim, hey, we invented the bread. Bread looks different, but it's still bread. Whether it's tortillas, bagels, or biscuits, it's still bread. Bread is everywhere. Bread has no boundaries. Jesus is everywhere. Jesus has no boundaries. And Jesus can do a whole lot more for you than just the basic meal that we eat and then we need more. Amen. That's why he said, I'm the bread of life. So can't you see why he says that? Mm -hmm. What does bread do for you? It fills you up. It fills you up. It meets that need that you have right then. What can Jesus do for you? Jesus can fill you up. Jesus would always meet your needs. He said, give us this day our daily bread. Now some of us, we're going to miss the bread because we're going after the full meal. And that's what these people missed. When's the next fish fry, boss? What did Jesus say? He said, man, you, you didn't come because you want me. You came because you, you want to get your bellies full. John Wesley said this. You know who John Wesley is? He's the one who founded the Methodist Church. So I think it's kind of funny that he said this. We have just enough religion to be miserable. We're feeding on all of these things and when we get so full, we're miserable. You ever backed up from the table and unbuttoned your britches? Why? Because you're full and you're, you mean you're just miserable. But this is what we do in life. We're going, we're doing, we're getting full. And we get full, and we get full. But then what happens when it wears off? We are unfulfilled. I'm talking to somebody today. I got to do this. I got to do that. I need, I need, I need, I need, I need, I need. And Jesus is like, I'm all you need. Amen. How many of us this morning are trying to live on yesterday's bread? Give us this day our daily bread. You know, when Jesus made the I am statements, He was saying, I am whatever you need me to be, whenever you need me to be it. Anything you are in need of, I am. There is this craving in each and every one of us that we can't fulfill. We can't do it. And that craving can only be satisfied with Jesus. Amen. And until we grasp that concept, what we will do is continue going after these other things in life. And, and we'll find fulfillment in that. But what happens when, when it wears off? When, what happens when you're not full anymore? You're hungry again. And we'll go back down another road, another avenue, and We'll try to find fulfillment in something else. And what happens is I'm still not fulfilled in life. And that craving is always there. And Jesus is trying to tell this crowd, and I believe he's trying to tell us this morning, that that temporary fix that you got, it's going to come back. That craving is going to come back until you get full on me. Now, was the crowd... Was the crowd interested in Jesus or were they interested in lunch? And see, Jesus went, he went straight to the problem when he said, you're not looking for me for me. You're looking for me because you want a free dinner. They missed it. 
They miss the whole concept. And I'm afraid that so many of us, we miss it. Because so many times we look right past Jesus for the blessing. Give me the blessing and we miss Jesus. Give us the healing and then we miss Jesus. And I'm thinking, would you like some God with that? Amen. Jesus wants you to want Him. Jesus wants total commitment, not a dinner date. Total commitment, not a lunch buddy. He wants total commitment, and be easy here, not a Sunday morning fix. Amen. A lot of people are attracted to Jesus and never follow Him. Amen. It's not something else plus Jesus. Okay? It's not my job plus Jesus. It's not my kids plus Jesus. It's not my activities plus Jesus. It's Jesus. Amen. And it's only Jesus. All that other stuff will work itself out when Jesus is in. Jesus revealed his identity in his invitation when he said, If you will come to me, you will never go hungry. He invites us not just to believe in him, but to be satisfied in him. I'm going to ask our musicians to come back. I'm going to pray for us. I believe that there's a lot of people. A lot of people are feasting on these things that, that are not Jesus. And Jesus is simply saying to us, would you like some God with that?